Okay, so the first step in our sort of authentication pipeline is going to be a modification to nav.js, right? So nav.js has essentially the responsibility to show a login box as well. So what I'm going to do, I am going to add that logic right in here. Now I'm going to add quite a bit of code, so don't be alarmed. We're going to go through that together, of course. So let me just copy the right bit of code over along with the register link. And theoretically, that's all the code that I need. As a couple of lines of code, as you can see. Now we do have some helpers like loading and then user. Where that comes from, I will we'll tell you in just a moment. But you see that there's some uh, conditional uh, inline conditional rendering happening here in Next. And I say if we have a user, then please show me the profile uh, menu item. Otherwise, show nothing. Um, also, if there's a user, please show me the logout, although probably because these are the same, I could have grouped them together, but you know, do that as a uh, homework maybe. Um, and then last but not least, I also have another use case where I say, I if there's no user, I mean, there's no active user currently logged in, then just add a form that is going to ask for a identifier and a password and I have the handle change for both of those you know if you know react then you know why uh, that's there and I also have this button that says login and of course we have this handle submit method that we also need to write that's going to be responsible for signing in a particular user so we do need to write quite a bit of code now handle change is going to be the one that we're going to start with. And as you can see, handle change is for both of these cases, both for the input type text and both for the input type password. And the reason why I can do that is because of writing some clever JavaScript that looks like this. So I'm leveraging all the greatest features of ES6. So I'm creating the, um, the, the properties programmatically. So now you can, uh, in JavaScript, create programmatic uh, property names and so I take the value of the input box and I set the, the value and because I'm building that up dynamically it's going to be either relevant to the input box or to the password box okay but this is still just react okay there's nothing um, next year specific so to speak I mean, next year is you know react essentially under the hood with superpowers now we do need to also specify uh, the use uh, state hook because we want to keep track of data and set data. So I'm going to call use state and we're going to instantiate the states again, not like that, but just from React um, using an object where I will pass in the identifier. And we're going to instantiate that to be empty and then the password is also going to be empty like so okay so we have that and let's now add the handle submit function which is going to be an asynchronous arrow function right here and i'm going to start with the classic prevent default on the event because we want to make sure that the button click is the only one that's going to be able to submit our form. So what do we need to do here? Well, one thing is for sure. If someone types in a username and a password, we need to make a request to Strapi. That's absolutely given. So I'm going to say const response equal to, I'm going to say await and let's call the fetcher again. And I'm just going to say process dot env dot next underscore and you know this this is the strappy url and we're going to go to slash all slash local so basically we are recreating the steps that we have used using insomnia and then i need to pass in a method which is going to be the post method so i'm just sending in some headers as well i'm going to send in the content 
type header to have a value of application slash json so i'm sending an http post to this url and i need to also send the body json stringified and i need to send in the identifier which will come from data.identifier identifier like so and we need to also send the password and that's going to be data.password like so okay then once we make the request we need to pass the request so i'm going to say response data or, you know again you could call this whatever you want i'm just going to say await response actually we don't need that right because fetcher already returns the data so we're just going to call that data and i'm just going to set a token with the data value so what is this set token well set token is going to be yet another method that we're going to be writing together and what i'll do is create a new file in the lib folder and i'm just going to call that auth.js and i'm going to copy a lot of code over but we're going to go through that as well so this particular file is going to be responsible for setting and unsetting the token what is the token that is going to set and unset well it's going to set and unset the json web token and as you can see i'm also using yet another dependency here so we need to make sure that we install that real quick which is the js cookies that allows me to manage cookies in a very easy way okay and that's pretty much done and so in this auth.js file when we set the token we basically grab the data and that's the data that comes back from the fetch api request and then i say the id the username and the json web token should be set as part of cookies and if the username cookie is not set then i'm or you know if it's set so basically there's a, a username cookie available then i just reload the page itself using the next.js routers reload method so that means if someone logs in and everything's correct the, part, the username's correct the password's correct they you know we then set the token using the cookies if everything is successful we just refresh the page and then we can act on this change inside the navigation or on the page that we are at and likewise we have the onset token where we say if someone clicks probably the logout button which we will implement in just a second we want to call the onset token method which will remove all the cookies that we have set and it will also reload the page for us okay and this is the set token function that we are referencing now there are some additional helper methods in here which we will come back to at a later point in time so in nav when i say set token i actually need to import set token from dash dash lib and auth and now i can essentially set the token so theoretically if once we set the token things will happen and likewise if you look here we have the logout link which says on click call the logout function so let's actually implement that as well it's going to be really easy logout is equal to this arrow function and we're just going to call unset token like so which auto imports from that auth file okay so this is you know this is great and it's you know we're getting there but of course if you open up the page it's still not going to work because we are missing loading we're missing user so where do those come from and i'm going to take a break here because i don't want this video to go on forever so let's just pause here and in the next video we're going to see where that loading and user variables come from